All right, I'm Roger Cook, AKA DJ Cook 'em Up, and today on Louisiana Unleashed, I have my homeboy, my dog, Creeper. What's that, man? Man, I'm doing good, man. I'm just happy to be here, Roger. Creeper in the building. What? In the building, I'm man. Here. We gonna get, we gonna get down with all these questions, man. Today, I know you've been dying to get some stuff off your chest. Oh man, I ain't got no, I haven't got no sleep. It's like but I've sure. been up all night because I feel like. This is a, a time for me to express me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, hey, man. That, well, we're going to start off with these questions, man. April, you've been in the game a minute. How long have you actually been messing around with this entertainment thing, man? Man, I've been messing around with this entertainment thing since, the, you know, since like the 90s, you know what I'm saying? Because my first time really experiencing somebody from the 95 doing music was when I listened to reality, you know what I'm saying? Right. And you know, scan them. So right. I was inspired by them. So I started writing in 98, 99, you know what I'm saying? And, and then by 2000, I met you. Right. So it's roughly 15 years, man, you know in what I'm the saying? game, man. You was, how old when you jumped in this thing? Cause we all know, cause you fooled me. <laughs> You messed up with me. Well, I'm sorry about that, man. You know, look, I had to, I was tall, so it was like, man, look, I ain't, I ain't better. I went to the club. It was like, I can't be able to get in this club, so I got to tell them I'm at least 17. But, you know, at that time, I was, what, 13, 14. So I had to tell a little, little fib to get in the building. You feel what I'm now, saying? Now, think about this, man. I'm DJing. I'm taking this man everywhere I went. I'm talking about the club, to the strip club. I'm talking about <laughs> everywhere. We all in New Orleans. I got a, a 13 year old with me and everybody like he's sick. So they ain't checking ID cause we had a little we had a little had a little cloud gone, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking this man, 17, 18, he 13, but he about 6'1. Hey, I had to do what I had to do, man. <laughs> so that's that's how it all started. Man, I got this boy dancing in clubs and people throwing money on the floor of him dancing, man, and, and uh <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna tell you a story behind that. We brought him home about two o'clock one morning. His mama said, Where y'all been? It just come from Jay's. She looked at me straight. <laughs> what, what, what's the problem? Man, this boy ain't number 13. He be going on 14. You see what I'm like? <laughs> oh my God. I had to Real do what I had to, I had to do, yeah, what I had to do, man. That's the story behind our meeting, bro. But after that, hey, he had been in there already, so. The damage man. been done. Yeah. The damage so was done. We kept rolling, we kept rolling, man. So, what, what actually inspired you to? When I met you, you were dancing, you were rapping a little bit. What inspired you or who inspired you to take this to the next level? Basically, it was my dad and his brother. You know, I went and stayed with him for a summer. And my uncle James uh, had just gotten a car wreck and he was in the process of writing a book and trying to get it published and released. Right. And so me sitting around the house watching him write and, how, and watching how he was just off in the space into his book, into his writing. I used to ask him questions like, you know, like, um, what makes you do that? And he was like, I just write down my thoughts, you know, and I put them right. into poems and stuff like that. Right. And so at that time, my dad was doing a lot of DJing and stuff. So right. he had a mic and he had CDs and he had certain CDs was instrumentals. Right. So I would take those instrumentals and I'll play those instrumentals and I had a mic and I'll be freestyling. Right. And my uncle was like, why, why freestyle? I mean, you could just write. So right. I started writing and playing around with different stuff. And I was listening to C Murder. Right. I was listening to Master P. Um, I paid attention to um, DJ, DJ Jubilee and Willie Puckett and them because right. I, I used to like to dance, you feel what I'm saying? So right. I kind of like incorporated all that, you know what I'm saying? So when I finally got a solid idea of, of my first song, my dad was so impressed he was like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna take you to meet somebody that could you know that could help you you know right. so he brought me to you right and it went on from there but who actually inspired me like to just pursue it and i didn't know this person personally but tupac shakur i always listened to him right. a lot so that's the reason why i was able to put my pain into a lot of music you know dancing was my stepping stone but when it came to um, just being like conscious and all that, and, and right. sensitive to social issues, it right. was it was Tupac because I was going through a lot at home. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I didn't have a, a solid foundation at home built, so I had to you know really put some of that stuff into my music. You know, but right. when it come to to, to inspi inspiration, bro, I was inspired by a lot of people that was around me. Right. Know? So. Right. So it was a lot of cats, a lot of a lot of older guys, a lot of. Thing. But uh, 
we, we're not gonna get into it, but later on I'm gonna ask you about this music business and some yeah. personal issues, but we, we're gonna get into that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, as far as the, uh, tell the people, like when you first started, like you started moving around when you, when you got with your groups and got with your people, tell them a little bit about that and how that came about as far as you, then you were solo when I first met you, right. then you brought me some, some other people. Some other people yeah, and y'all yeah. Tell us how that tell us how the Ice Boys started, man. Really. Man, man, man. The Ice Boys actually was a, a dancing group, you know, that that went around battling, you know what I'm saying? Right. And uh I actually wasn't a part of the Ice Boy group in the beginning because it was like a, a dancing group in Roller Kingdom and it consisted of the markets, which you know everybody right. known as Sub Zero and my homeboy Tyra and I, you know, and a couple of more guys. I was part of a, a, a little group called Retaliation, and we right. was like arch rivals, like, like you know, we used to be in the skating ring, you know, Roller going Kingdom, at. like going at it, you yeah. know. So they always kind of compared me and Sub, like, because we had similar dance styles, you know what right. I'm saying? But I never would battle Sub. Right. Sub was a motherfucking animal, man. <laughs> I'm not finna get embarrassed. Are you right. stupid? So what happened was. One summer I had to go to summer school and it was crazy because DeMarcus, you know, AK Sub Zero, he was in summer school also. Right. So I used to see him every day and I'm like, man, but I ain't never want to approach him. So I linked up with a, one of my homeboys, R.I.P. to Poker, you know what I'm saying? Right. Me and him linked up. And he was telling me about DeMarcus. He said, man, y'all y'all really need to link up and, and, and try something. So right. I, I made it my initiative to go to his job, which he, he was working at Ryan's and I walked in there and he looked at me like, you know, like, what you doing? What you want to battle up in here? I'm like, man, I don't want to, but I look like battling you. I'm going to talk to him. Like, look, man, I want to try to put together a little group, man, you know, and do some music. He said, all right, man, well, come by the house. I live, you know, on Natchez Street, you know what right. I'm saying? He told us the directions and stuff like that. And when he, when I went to his house, this dude was outside at, at 12 o'clock at night, running up and down the damn road, trying to exercise and doing sit-ups and push-ups. I'm like, what right. the fuck? <laughs> And he was actually serious about it. So right. he went inside, got his keyboard, and came back outside and started playing tracks. I'm like, man, we can make something pop. Right. So a couple of days later, I just presented him to you. So right. when 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 I presented him to you, you liked the way you liked what you saw. And then we was kind of like trying to put together routines. And we got footage of all that stuff. So right. it, they'll get a chance to see that. But that's really how the Ice Boys kind of started forming. You know what I'm right. saying? We started forming from there, you know? We didn't right. even have a name because I was like torn in between the two. I'm like, man, I ain't fucking with that Ice Boy shit. You gonna be <laughs> retaliation, you know what I'm saying? If yeah. we can't be retaliation, we gotta come up with something else. And then we started dealing with another dude named Michael Kays. You know, he's out there in uh, Franklinton. He yeah. put together some shows out there. Right. And he was like, man, what y'all gonna call y'all selves? Y'all gonna call y'all selves the dancers or what? what? Man, y'all need to come up with something for this flyer. So me and Sub just sat down. We was like, man, what we gonna do? What we gonna do, Sub? So we we gonna be the Ice Boys. So I went along with it. And I was like, well, all right then, if I could be the Ice Boys, you know? Right. And so that's how that started. That's how the Ice Boys, like the name, got together because I just agreed with it. To disagree with him, but fuck it, that's how it that happened. That's you know? how it happened, man. And then from there, y'all did quite a bit of stuff. Y'all made a name for yourself in in the, in the parish. Uh, you used to ask this question, man. If you thinking back, if if you could have done anything different, I mean, what, what would you what what would you have done? See, man. I, I know it's a lot. It's a lot. If I could, if I could do, if I could do anything different. <clears throat> you know, just fast forwarding a little bit, even though we got to go back a little bit and kind of like touch up on things. If I could have did anything different, when I stepped in Master P house, when we went to uh, to Houston to go meet Master P right. for that No Limit and G unit tour, I would have spoke up like, P, you need to check out the Ice Boys. You need to come over here, talk to my manager, and you need to see what we got going on. I wouldn't have act like no background dancer at that time. I would have said, I was like, you need to check this out and see what we got going on because I feel like we could be the next B2K because, you know, they was hot back then. We could be the next B2K. We could be whatever you want to be, but I feel like we could be, you know, platinum artists. So you need to peep us out. So if I could do anything different, I would have stepped to pee like a man. Right. You know, even though you and Bradella, y'all was on our ass to make a look. You know, professional mode, you know what I'm saying? Because right. the, the attention was on Black Ice and Keith and Wild Wayne was trying to get them a deal. Right. 
But if I could do anything different, I would have stepped to him myself. You know what I'm saying? Because, right. I mean, I was sitting on the side of his brother in, in, in his house. You know what I'm saying? I could have talked right. to anybody. So if I could have done anything different, that's what I would have did. That's what's up. That's what's up. Man, uh, I know we can't count the shows, man. But telling people all the places that, that you perform because they think you've just been doing stuff in Hammond and at the skating ring. Tell them. Tell them all the, well, if you could remember all the places. Oh. Just give them a few of them. Man, man, man. My my old, I remember I remember when our first the biggest show that we did the first biggest show we did was Family Day in the Park in Baton Rouge. I mean when you look into the crowd it's like it's like an everlasting crowd of people you know what I'm saying so that was the first big thing House of Blues, Superdome, uh, Cajun Dome with you know with Master P and Lil Romeo, the car show in Houston. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on and on, you know what I'm saying? Family Day in the Park, the city park in, in New Orleans, right. you know? So, uh, Hub City in uh, <laughs> Hattiesburg, Clarksdale, Mississippi. Quite a bit. Quite, quite a, a bit, bit, man. I mean, yeah, quite a bit. So, I mean, yeah, the list goes on and on, you know what I'm saying? So, like I say, this before social media, this before Facebook, this before YouTube, this before all that. So, you literally had to have, you literally had to have proof. You know what I'm saying? So that's the reason why we took pictures everywhere we went. Right. We had a scrapbook everywhere we went, you know? So I'm thankful to be a pioneer, you know what I'm saying? I'm thankful to have all those experiences, you know, even though a lot of people don't know about it, getting a chance to know now. And that's the truth. <laughs> all right, Creeper. You're gonna talk about some business moves that, 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 that we all made, that, that we did. You know, I have my company, Top Notch Entertainment, right. which is now Koyak Entertainment. Right. Pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of things going at that time, and we 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 didn't disagree on the the, the move. But I was like, okay, I mean, they may be right, you know, whatever right. whatever everybody's saying. So mm -hmm. we agreed to depart or separate or release from the management contract. Right. What 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 do you feel about that that? Uh, departure at the time man i mean now you see it different but i mean at the time tell yeah. us at the time and then now how you see it well at that time when we departed from top notch entertainment um we had well i was i already knew my band director but he didn't know that i did music so when i went to clinton we did a show in clinton and i came to him and i showed him the show on tape he was like, he had that ice boy bug or whatever, you know, so he was liking what we had going on. So what he did was he started coming around, peeping out stuff. He went to, you know, trying to see, you know, because he felt like he saw a gold mine, in other words, which I can't blame him. He was talented, you know. And um, he basically was telling us, um, I, I feel like y'all only going so far with Roger. And he can't take y'all no farther than what he taking y'all. And, and we all felt like that's the truth because yeah, we gotta, did. yeah, we, we feel, I know us as a group, like we felt like that he was telling the truth. He felt like we felt like he was 100 because, <clears throat> I mean, look, we had Michael Jackson, not Billy Jean and Michael Jackson, but Michael D. Jackson, who, you know, who owns 81. He was around us, you know, um, he wasn't promising us anything, but we were just blinded by the Mercedes and the, the fame he had as a football player and, a lot of just a lot of talk, you know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, we had we met Misco, former manager, which is you know, Freddie Carter. We met him, and he was basically telling us that oh, he could manage us, you know, he could take us the same route he took Misco, and he could right. do this and he could do that. All we had to do was stay in shape, practice, and he had us, you know what I'm saying? He also told us the only reason I'm doing this is because of Herman. And so we was low, we like, shit. We walk in this house, we see these platinum albums on the wall, we see all this, that and the third, and all these stories. So fuck it, we finna try and do this right here with right. big play entertainment. So what Fred did, Freddie sat down with us one night and he asked us, what do y'all really wanna do? Me, Sub, and Chico agreed that we was gonna part ways with Top Notch Entertainment. We said, look, fuck it, we just gonna, we gonna roll with this cause we feel like this the best move, you know? Right. So he sat down on the computer and he typed up a contract, basically releasing us, trying to get us released from Top Notch Entertainment. And 
So we was all in that motherfucker pow wow and shaking each other's hand like we finna move up. So so fuck it. What we did was we all hopped in the truck. Once the contract was all printed out, we hopped in the truck and we headed to Hammond. You just looked at the contract and you was like, fuck it, if that's what y'all wanna do, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I could honestly say that neither one of us felt no remorse for it. Neither one right. of us at that time, you know, regardless of how people feel right now, all of us felt the same way at the time, you know what I'm saying? And um, and kind of fast forward to right now, uh, a few months back, how I felt, I felt like, I felt like people was putting it like I was the one basically pushing the issue of for us leaving. And it was kind of fucked up. The feeling, the feeling of that kind of like really fucked me up, bro. Because I'm not the only one that felt like that at that time, bro. We all agreed on that shit. So I feel like people was throwing stones at me, throwing stones at me when they know in their heart, they knew in their heart that they wanted to leave too, you know. So that's what we did. So we got there, got that big plate, and Mike. You know, Gabe brought a, a big ass machine and I call a Mac, and I don't know what the fuck it was, but it looked like some shit that Snoop Dogg never called on. <laughs> right. So we got, we got, we got in the yo, we want the, we want the drop and shit. We like, okay, we finna, whoa, whoa. bam. So we was going to Tangible Ho recording every damn day. We was recording Tangible Ho. We was doing a lot of shows too, but what was so crazy about it is all that shit, Freddie promise ain't none of that shit come through Freddie came around every now and then and I feel like all the music we were dropping at that time wasn't shit getting put out wasn't nothing getting put out I mean goddamn we ain't B2K you know what I'm saying we, we dropping good music so why not put some of that shit out so I never said anything because I felt like he was right he managed mystical so he knew what the fuck he doing you know what I'm saying so I chill back and so what happened was we ended up moving the studio equipment from tangible hole up over here to Punchatula, and Reg was the one doing all the engineer work. Right. We got ready to go to the studio one night, we done wrote the song and shit. We get up there to the studio, me and Chico, you know, we we, we kids back then, so we wait, yeah, boy, I'm ready to drop this motherfucker. We get to the studio, a big ass hole in the door. The door, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Hey, somebody done stole all the Broke motherfucking in, equipment. Stole everything. Stole everything, yeah. bro. So what happened, we ain't had nowhere to record. We wasn't with you no more, so we wasn't getting booked. You know what I'm saying? Cause right. you and Keith had a relationship to where it's like she he 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 fucked with you. You right. know what I'm saying? He fucked with you and he wasn't fucking with Herman and them. He don't know them. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's who we were fucking with. So we was sitting at home every weekend. Nobody wasn't doing shit. And all of a sudden, LaCalle started blossoming. And he was with wise guys entertainment at that time. And Chico is, you know, he was right over there too because, you know, that's his dad that runs that company. Right. So Chico said, man, fuck this. And we ain't doing shit. I ain't nobody doing nothing. I'm finna get the fuck away from this bitch. That's what he did. My man struck out, you know what I'm saying? And then that kind of like threw a fucking roadblock, like boom, you know what I'm saying? Right. So to answer the question, how I feel about the, the transition now, as you know what I'm saying, compared to how I felt back then, I felt like we made a fucked up move. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we made a fucked up move. I feel like we should have just been patient and, mm -hmm. and, and, and not be blinded by the smoke and mirrors because right. that's exactly what it was. You know what I'm saying? I mean, no disrespect to nobody, but that's just my opinion. You right. know what I'm saying? So, yeah, to answer that question, I feel right now, I feel like it was a fucked up move. Yeah. But this is what I feel about it. I don't think it was a messed up move. I think it was a, a, a decision because I was like, me myself, I'm believing them too. Like, Okay, they they may be right. Yeah. You know what what can I do? I'm from Hammond. They got all these contacts. I mean, I'm kind of thinking the same thing, and I was like, damn. And then I, you know, watching it, watching it develop, and I was like, okay, I do that. You know, been doing that too. You know, yeah. what I'm saying? as I'm watching it develop, I'm like, dang. Right. Then, believe it or not, I'm feeling kind of fucked up because I let y'all make that decision. Right. You know, what I'm saying I'm like, oh, nah, it's, it's on my it's on my shoulder a little bit. Like, hmm, damn. You know, my people like, man, things happen in the business. Then we hadn't talked in about maybe a year or so. Yeah. And I was like, man, hell with this. Let me pick up the phone. I need y'all to come do these couple gigs for me that 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 I that I didn't remember. Me and myself wasn't keeping up. I thought y'all was constantly staying busy. Fuck no. As soon as I called y'all, I thought I was gonna have to go through a whole bunch of stuff and like that, bro. And y'all right off, y'all came by the house. Shit, I I was ready to strike out walking. Yeah. I got tired of sitting still. And, uh, man. But like I said, I don't think it was, and, and business-wise is how I think, I don't think it was a, was a, was a 
bad decision because you was trying to go to the next level. And everybody go through that. You, you, you're trying to switch off your game and go to the next level. But sometimes when you do switch, you got to take your foundation with you. And that, that's one of the uh, things I ask artists. If you had anything you wanted to tell a up and coming artist, what would you tell them since you got a whole lot of experience in this thing? What, what would you tell an up and coming artist that was green, like don't know nothing? Man, I tell them if you really, if you really, really passionate about being an artist and being somebody that sticks out, practice on your craft, man. Get in that notebook, get in your phone or whatever you want, man. Write, just write them, just write. Be authentic. Don't be diluted by what's going on in the industry. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not saying, oh, don't fall in place and do what's hot. Do what's hot, but also be your own self. You know what I'm saying? And, and kind of, I ain't saying be patient and just sit back and get fucked over, but you gotta be patient. You gotta kind of hurry up and wait a little bit. And you can't just go with every move. You can't be jumping clicks and doing this and doing that. Just calm your ass down. And if you in high school, stay your ass in school. You know what I'm saying? Learn as much as you can learn. Get them numbers right. You know, get your, get, get your English right. Whatever you got to do. You know what I'm saying? They told me the same shit and I didn't listen. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's a little bit harder for me now. You know? And also, keep your image up. You know? Swag it out. Look apart when you go somewhere. If you a group, look apart. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you look the same, look the same. But also, look apart and stand out, man. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. Even and to the women. Don't don't open your legs and try to fuck your way through the game. It's not gonna work. You're gonna be whoa wow, a tired ass female that ain't nobody gonna wanna sign. And that's just basically it. You know what I'm saying? So just stay focused, stay real, stay loyal, and practice on your craft. Period. It's not that hard. All right, all right, creeper. A lot of people wanna know. You know, we did some. We already talked about the past and 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 what happened and all that. And you gave some insight on what what you was doing. What what are you doing now with with your music and your uh, career? And what what are your plans for the future? 2016 just got here. Man, 2016 came, and it's like when it came. Um, in 2015, the end of 2015, I was on my knees every night praying that I could get back straight with this music and I could start back practicing on my craft like I was in the past. So, what 2016 when it hit. Man, a lot of blessings started coming through, man. A lot of financial blessings, you know, to kind of kept, kept, catch me up on my bills and stuff like that. Because, you know, even as an artist, you still have a personal life, you know what I'm saying? So, right now, man, uh, I'm linked up with Touchdown, which is the hottest producer through the 985, you know, and that's, that's my opinion, but everybody else's opinion too, you know. I'm linked up with him. I'm recording like every other day, you know, I got a, a song called she not she looking for love, you know what I'm saying? Right. And basically that song is like, you know, a girl is at home every weekend, her man out in the club hoeing around, you know, whatever he doing, and uh -huh. she looking for love. And I put a little bounce twist on it, right. you know what I'm right. saying? So what I'm doing right now with my music, man, is just staying consistent, you know, continue right. writing, continue recording, and um, hopefully some of that heat expand out and go somewhere you know what I'm saying right. so that's what I'm doing and I'm also like uh, just just a one-man army sometimes I feel like you know what I'm saying because right. I mean I, I don't ask for much you know uh, I reached out to certain people you know um, I even tried to I even tried to fix bridges that was burnt you know right. with no matter how my shit sound to, 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 to nobody else it sounds good if it sounds good to me and I'm satisfied I'm gonna keep on moving so right. no no hard feelings toward that, but what I'm doing with my music right now is just pushing it to the public, and hopefully somebody would like it and they'll pick me up. You know. Right. What if, what if somebody picked you up? And this this is my question. What if somebody picked you up, and the stuff that you're doing, we, they'd have to reconstruct it, or re-record it, or, 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 or rearrange it. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes, like I said, what 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 professional is here and what you know, all this shit is two different things half the time. Well, you know. Yeah, I understand that. I, if they if they pick it up, then they must have some type of interest in it. Yeah. So if they want to reconstruct anything, you know, the name of the game is adapt. Right. You know, you gotta evolve. You can't just stay stuck in your own ways. And I learned that from I learned from my mistakes. You know, so 
my pride and my ego stopped a whole lot of shit and burnt a lot of bridges that I was trying to fix. So if somebody wants to reconstruct something and it makes sense, and then that's what I'm gonna do. How about them, I hear you say you burnt a lot of bridges with people, man. Uh, I don't know if you burned a bridge with me, but I ain't never had no problem with you. I know. You. I know. <laughs> I ain't I know. No problem with you. I know. But, because like I said, it was like, sometimes this, this, this music relationship is just like a, a girlfriend or a wife. Right. You're going to have your arguments, you're going to have your fallouts, you're going to have your, your disagreements. But when you get to the ball of it, everybody should be on the same page about right. the best for the brand or the artist or right. whatever. And that's what a lot of the arguments come in at. And a lot of people take it personal when it's not personal. It's what we as managers and producers and, and record labels are trying to get the artists to understand. But sometimes the artists kind of want to go in a separate way. But you got you got to come to that common ground. As, is this the best thing for me? Right. So uh, in saying that, say for instance, if somebody, because like I said, the talent hasn't gone anywhere. Mm. It's just that what, what I see in the 95 is Everybody want to be entertainers. Nobody want to do the part that we do back here. Nobody want to arrange stuff. Nobody want to get the paperwork right. Nobody want to do the business of it. And a lot of people get, like myself, get tired of dealing with artists that just want to come in. I just want to do music and just put it out. Right. And what I'm saying to most artists, if, if, you, if you come to me, what you're doing now might be the brakes might be put on because we're gonna get the business done. Right. You'll be like, man, well, I ain't doing nothing. Well, I can't do nothing. <laughs> right. Because you ain't got your right. stuff together. Right. So that's what happened when you come over here. Because the brakes gonna stop, I gotta figure out a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. You might be sitting up for two to three weeks before I even say, man, let me get you a call and this is what I got. Right. You know, but don't stop recording and don't stop doing your thing. But once you put your handcock on one of my contracts, we're gonna get we're gonna get your business together first. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna get your business together, Fred. We're gonna talk to you about your business. But you, you've been knowing me for. Man, since uh, I was a kid. I mean, they since know. Since I had you out there at the strip club. Exactly. At 14. <laughs> so, but, I understand that. So.